Hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to invite you to the last panel discussion of the day. It will be a virtual one, so we're connecting to the speakers from all over the world. And the title is, How can startups and corporations collaborate to achieve impact at scale? So let me quickly introduce the speakers. It's Sarah Misson from Plus X, Ion Hauer uh, from BSH, Carlos Rubel, EIT Digital, Maria Han from Nutrix, and Pavel Kulon will be the moderator, and he's the CEO of OMG KRK. So enjoy the panel. Summit. Uh, thank you for everyone for joining us uh, today, where for the next 20 minutes, we'll be talking about how can startups and corporations collaborate to achieve impact at scale. I'm Pavel Kulon. I'm the president of the foundation supporting OMG KRK. Uh, we're working to build a world-class innovation ecosystem in Krakow, and I'll be your moderator today. I'm joined uh, with four outstanding guests um, uh, who will be uh, discussing this topic today. Um, I would uh, like to start off with um, uh, Maria, our founder here, and start with a startup perspective and then move um, through all our, uh, all our guests um, for their response and then um, maybe circle back around to Maria. So perhaps um, let's start with introductions. Um, if you could just share a little bit about yourself, your organization, and maybe a quick answer to the lead question of our panel, how can startups and corporations collaborate to achieve impact at scale? Maria? Thank you, Pavel. It's great to be here and, uh, you know, like talk about this topic because uh, I used to work in the corporation uh, in medical devices for the last 10 years and I'm a recent uh, startup uh, uh, founder. So I, I started by the end of last year. And for me, it's this topic is very fresh. So I'm still doing the comparisons no, from the corporate to the startup. And um, uh, for me, it's uh, this uh, collaboration between the corporations and startups is key uh, to drive innovation and also uh, to stay competitive uh, for the comp corporations and uh, to, in, uh, to build uh, innovative products and also for us as startups to scale up. Great, thanks. So maybe Carlos, you can introduce yourself, your organization and uh, what it's doing to increase cooperation between corporates and, and startups at scale. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pavel. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm with EIT Digital. We are part of the EIT, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. And uh, we're a nonprofit organization uh, whose role is to promote innovation and entrepreneurship across Europe. What we do uh, to bridge the gap between scale-ups and corporates really is what we call the Accelerator Program. This is basically uh, a team of 25 people, including myself, uh, spread all, all over Europe. And what we do is basically we scout, you know, the, some of the best digital tech scale-ups out there, companies that are already well uh, established in their own markets and they're now facing the challenge of scaling their operation in other international markets and typically need to sell in i mean their business models are business to business or business to business to consumer and they need to go through you know selling uh, to to corporates so our program basically is about helping them uh you know do that and and how to you actually make that happen as well as raise funding um from our experience and my personal experience working with companies, I've, I'm fairly familiar with the Polish ecosystem. I lived in Krakow for a few years, and uh, and I've worked for multiple Polish companies within the program. I think, um, you know, it, this is a two sides of the coin, I think. Scale-ups on the one side need to recognize that corporates are, you know, what, they're, what the situation is with regards to this. I mean, they have, they have to, you know, they're, they're under tremendous pressure to to change their business models and to transform digitally uh, but they don't you know they don't sometimes they don't have a clear path to do that and scale-ups are a part of the puzzle that they're you know that is difficult for them to work with because they're not used to these sort of providers so mm, you need to find the accelerators to make that happen and that's really around understanding you know really who you're trying to sell to really have a clear understanding of who you're, who you're targeting in terms of end customers and then mobilizing channel partners as well i think 
companies that already work with corporates and enterprises uh, have the relationship with the customers need technology to actually be able to be more competitive and there's a tension there we don't sometimes i see scale-ups as competitors sometimes as potential partners i think scale-ups really need to recognize that at the end of the day to sell to to corporate organizations you need to do both you need to target both corporates as well as child partners in, in many countries to be able to scale quickly that's the first go at it thanks carlos um i think i've noticed a growth of programs specifically dedicated uh to creating a partnership between uh, scale-ups and corporations and uh, i'm curious whether this sort of uh program model that creates funnels and serves as an intermediary at between um, corporates and scale-ups uh, is effective and whether uh, it's something that's going to uh, continue moving forward. Sarah, um, can you introduce yourself and uh, are you also running a, a program that does matchmaking between scale-ups and corporates? Yeah, sure. Hi. Uh, so I'm uh, Sarah Misson, Director of Partnerships at PlusX. Um, PlusX are uh, an innovation hub, um, so think like a co-working space, but actually we enable businesses of all size into the community, so we're really purposeful about the members that we want to bring in, so we want to look at and target startups, but we also want to target scale-ups and also corporates, so it's about that curated collaboration. Um, I've just previously um, come from Techstars, where I actually spent the majority of my time um, building programs uh, and, and really processes and methodology for corporates and startups to collaborate. Um, and so it's interesting. I think, I think there's a place for organizations like that to be intermediaries. I think... Um, I think you have to look at the skills and strengths of, of um, you know, what you bring to the party and uh, someone like a textiles or an innovation hub, I think are sometimes better place to be able to do that. I think they have the credibility. I think they have the tools, the expertise. Um, and I think, you know, there was a, a study um, that came out, Capgem and I ran that said, you know, 88% of corporates all said they absolutely need to be working with startups, but the the actual percentage of, of them doing it well and, and being able to execute and then to scale is actually really tiny. So I think there's, I, I think um, the difficulty that corporates have is obviously, as, as Carlos mentioned, you know, is they are a, a, a generally a massive organization. There are a small amount of people that are trying to drive innovation. And so they, just the organization themselves are up against, you know, challenges to get new and interesting technology absorbed or even even at pilot stage, let alone scaling something. So startups being aware of, you know, of what it takes to work with an organization, I think is, you know, is a valid point. And if companies like like Plus X, we we run innovation programs as well, and part of that is scouting. But it's, it, we find the value is actually m more than just the scouting. You know, corporates can go out and find startups to work with, but that ability to um, change their organization to become more agile, um, I think, is, is where we need a lot of work. Um, I think there are so many examples of um, pilots that have begun or even interactions with startups that that get going, like the willingness is there by, say, the innovation team, but that, that point beyond execution is really hard. And so I think corporates have a responsibility to actually go and figure out some of those processes. I think internal buy-in is important, mapping out their startup processes. Um, one particular company we worked with wanted to run some pilots, and when they actually mapped out how long it would take to go from starting – with the startup through to just executing was something like a year. And so the, that ability to do something <laughs> really quickly meant that they had to change a lot of their processes. So it can be done, um, but I definitely think, you know, corporates can do it on their own if they've got the right tools and mechanisms in place. But I think using a third party can actually be really valuable. Thanks, Sarah. So um, moving to Ian, um, I think you bring an investor perspective uh, to this conversation. Um, what, can you introduce yourself, your organization, and, and your perspective on corporate startup collaboration at scale? 
Absolutely. Thanks, Pavel, for having me. And uh, yes, my name is Jon Hauer. I'm a venture partner at BSH, which is the largest uh, home appliance manufacturer in Europe under the Bosch and Siemens brands um, predominantly. And as, as Sarah mentioned, uh, also BSH has realized that uh, collaborating with startups is a very crucial element of securing our innovation future. And therefore, we have built uh, a specific program within BSH, which is called BSH Startup Kitchen, which uh, aims to establish partnerships between BSH as a corporate and startups uh, along three pillars mainly. So we want to create value for both sides. It should be business driven and long term oriented. And therefore, we established this, this program um, which has a very clear structure from sourcing the right targets, uh, running pilots, and then scaling the solution within the corporate in uh, a vast area of different topics. So it can be in the, the product area where features can later turn out to, to be part of our appliances. It can be in the factory area where we have like industry 4.0 topics um, and as well in the business process areas like legal and HR, for example, so a very broad area that uh, we support. Um, and we've actually run several uh, pilots since the initiation two years ago, uh, over 20 now, uh, incidentally with some of uh, Carlos's portfolio companies as well. So um, we think it's a very unique uh, program, as in it's not investing, uh, to, to be correct there. So we take no equity, we take no IP, everything stays with the startup. Uh, it's basically a business relationship for the startup. It's, it's, it's business development. It's a big client, the, the biggest in this, in, in this industry in Europe. Um, and for BSH is, yes, sometimes a, a cultural a stretch, of course, that, that we need to take and, and some product uh, experts and, and engineers need to take. Uh, but we see a lot, of, a lot of traction in this program, also communicating it within the company um, so uh, the corporation can open up to this sort of, uh, yeah, uh, collaboration mode with, with, young, with young startups. And I think it's a very good platform also for the startups to, to succeed. Great. Thanks. So with the, the remainder of my panel, I want to focus on the at scale part of our question. So here, um, you know, it's probably inefficient for one scale up to be trying to sell to one corporate, putting a lot of time and effort into that sales process only for it to work out. And also a corporation probably wants a much bigger pipeline and funnel into its, uh, uh, you know, decision makers instead of just one startup. So how do we get a lot of startups engaging with a lot of corporations uh, at the same time? Um, I don't know. Um, I think there might be some segmentation that's necessary or a clear program outlines. So I, I want to talk, focus on the, the scaling up of uh, the cooperation. Um, Maria, maybe I can ask you first, uh, have you had any success as a founder pitching or selling or collaborating with multiple corporations at one time that you can share with us? Maria, we can't hear you. Uh, if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, we've been in contact with the big pharma companies. Uh, we are based in Basel, so Basel is a hub for the uh, pharma companies. Uh, so we are very close with the whole ecosystem there. But uh, it's for the moment uh, our relationship with them. It's uh, more on the exchange of uh, innovation and also support from the mentors. So this is also very important to, uh, for us, uh, how we are uh, preparing our innovation for scale up. Uh, so this is, let's say, like uh, with, with multiple partners, but uh, this was possible because of the location. Great. And now for the remaining panelists, I want to ask, um, when you talk to your corporate partners, what are you pitching them? What do the decision makers at the corporates like to hear when you talk about scale-up pipelines and uh, innovation pipelines? Are you pitching them by specific segment or what are, what are the corporate decision makers, uh, re what's resonating with them when you talk about you know, um, being able to present uh, numerous scale-ups to them at any one time. Anyone can jump in here. No, I can I can jump in. Uh, the The best scenario is when a corporate actually has a good understanding of strategically where are the areas where 
they're looking for innovation in the scale-up ecosystem or startup ecosystem to apply it to particular business needs. That's the ideal scenario because then it makes the conversations a lot more productive and effective. You're basically introducing companies that are relevant to what they're looking for, and it just uh, makes the engagement a lot faster and, and actually bears more results. In some cases, you have companies that are not in that point and it depends. I mean, some corporations are not there yet. They're, they're aware of, of the startup ecosystem as a source of innovation, but they're not 100% clear. And then you need to do more of a sort of a consultative sale. I mean, to understand, to put yourself in their shoes and understand, you know, what are, what are the, the, the possible drivers of innovation for their business and come more with the pain benefits that are delivered by the solution to entice uh, the conversation. Thank you, Carlos. Sarah, do you agree with that? And I'm also very curious if you could maybe say who are the two most important decision makers on the corporate side when it talks to working uh, with scale-ups? So maybe who does the conversation start with and who does it end with on the conversion? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, plus one to everything Carlos just said, a lot of our conversations um, we have with corporates are around, we say, getting your house in order right? So it's before we even think about looking at which of the cool scale-ups or, or some of the solutions is that we have to do the back-end work, work first. And most of that actually is around the why. Like, why are you actually doing this? Like, is this a strategic need? Are you, you know, whatever it is, right? Understanding the why. If the answer is we think we should be doing it, it's not the right answer, right? Like there has to be a business need because there are so many people and resources involved that you need all of those in line before you can do something and execute something like this successfully. So I think I think that if you were to categorize the two decision makers, I guess, or the important resources, I think you need to have um, – one that I would say the champion. So who is the person that is going to ensure that this project gets rolled out end to end, that is going to champion that startup, that is going to make sure every single function that that startup might touch from procurement to finance to legal to the data team, the research team, whatever it is, is that they have paved that path for that startup to be successful. And the second would be executive leadership. Or, or the, whether it's the CTO, the CIO, CEO, if they have decided that this is a priority, they will ensure teams are aligned or get in line to make sure that happens. So they would be my two, um, my two key key stakeholders. Sarah, thanks a lot for that. Um, a lot more can be said on the topic, but I'm afraid uh, that's all the time we have today. Uh, thank you to our viewers uh, tuning in uh, to this panel. And I wish everyone a productive uh, and constructive Wolf Summit and uh, fruitful cooperation between uh, corporates and scale-ups moving forward. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.